Hey, welcome back to Swift Goose. In today's video, I wanted to do a quick overview of table view or UI table view in iOS and UI kit and just go through how to make a basic table like this and an even more basic one with just text as well. But it is also embedded in the navigation controller. So you can click in here and just get a quick switch between screens and just show you how all this works. So I've created a base iOS project here and we're going to come to our main.storyboard and we've got a view controller already here for us by default. Let's come to the top right to our library and here's where we can add our table view. So let's just look for table and we have table view, view cell, and view controller. We want the table view. Let's drag it anywhere in here. It doesn't really matter. Let's just drag it into the middle. We're going to give this constraints anyway so that it goes to the edges. So let's click that button, then just zero, tab zero, tab zero, tab zero, and then hit enter. So it will fill the whole screen. And with our table view selected, we can open up the attributes inspector on the right here and change our prototype cells to be one. And you'll see we have a prototype cell there given to us. And now we need to give the prototype cell a reuse identifier. So if you move your mouse to the middle here and click, you should get the cell. You'll know that you have the cell on the left here. So we have table view cell. And then again, in the attributes inspector on the right, we have our identifier, reuse identifier here. And we'll just call this cell for now for the purpose of this tutorial, just to keep things easy. And now we want to link up our table view with the view controller. So let's hold option and click on our view controller and select the table view, hold control and drag it above our view did load function here in the view controller. And we'll just call this table view. And now we can close our storyboard and go back to our view controller and do our work here. The table view needs to have an array to read from and basically populate its data with. So let's make a array of strings. So now to get our table view to fill with this data, we need to have our view controller conform to the table view data source protocol. And we get an error here saying that we do not conform to the protocol. So do we want to add the stubs? Sure, why not? And basically this gives us our cell for row at function. At this particular row in our index path, what kind of cell do we want to return? Or what kind of prototype cell do we want to use and reuse? So here we can say let cell equals table view dot dq reusable cell. We'll go with the identifier and four. And the identifier is just the reuse identifier that we use for the prototype cell. So that was our cell, if you recall. And then the index path is just index path. And we need to return our cell. And then here we can just set our cell dot text label, which is gonna be deprecated, but for now we'll use it. And set that equal to our strings array at our index path dot row and we're still missing another function fix and that is the number of rows in section our table view needs to know how many rows it, it's going to populate with so we'll return our strings dot count and then the final step here is to set the table view dot data source equal to self now if we run this We have a table with our four strings in it. You can click on them. It has the scrolling and feature already implemented. But nothing actually happens if you click on these. So you can click as many times as you want. It does get highlighted, which sometimes is annoying for certain tasks that you're working on. So if you want to get rid of that, you can just set the cell selection style to be none. So let's do that. Selection style equals none and that will get rid of that problem at least so now when we select them it doesn't highlight them but still nothing happens when you click on it so let's fix that now 
If we want our table view to respond to clicks, we also need our view controller to conform to the UI table view delegate protocol. So let's add that in here and then add some space and we'll do did select. So table view dot did select row at, and this is saying what's going to happen when you click on a cell at that particular row. So here, let's for now, let's just print out strings array of our index path dot row just to see that that's working. And this actually won't work if you notice. We click on nothing happens because we didn't set the table view delegate. So just like our data source, we need to set the delegate equal to be self as well. So now let's run that again. And now when we hit alpha beta, alpha, unlimited, revised, they all work. But let's say you wanted to do something a little bit more interesting, like move over to another view. So to do that, let's go back to our storyboard here. <clears throat> and we are going to come to the library and add a view controller. And for the storyboard identifier, we want to change that here and let's just put test DC for now. Hit enter, make sure you hit enter there. And then let's come to our view controller, click on the little top bar up here to get the view controller and go to editor embed in navigation controller. And I'll explain this more in another video, but for now let's not worry about it. Let's go back to view controller. And instead of printing here, Let's get this storyboard. So let's say storyboard equals UI storyboard main name. And the bundle will be nil. And then let's grab the view controller from that storyboard. So storyboard dot instantiate view controller with identifier. And that's test VC. And then let's say VC dot navigation item dot title equals strings of index path dot row and then we're going to navigation controller dot push view controller vc and animated let's make that true so now when we run this again if we click on alpha it's automatically going to take us to our separate view controller with the title of alpha and the nav bar title there and also give us a back function which works and one more thing that we can work on is if we wanted to customize our cell a little bit not just to have text but maybe also a button and text or an image something like that just to make it a little bit more interesting so we can do that with zibs or nibs and let's do that now so let's command n create a new Coco touch class and let's make this UI table view cell and we'll just call this my table view cell also create storyboard XIB file sorry not storyboard just XIB file and we'll put it there that's fine so at the top here we have our table view cell and then our zip file or nib file whatever you want to call it and at the top, let's put our identifier, static let identifier equals my table view cell. And let's also create a function, static func nib. And this will just make it easier to call in our view controller. So let's go to the table view cell nib or zib and Let's just drag that down a little bit, expand this, and let's add in a UI image. So an image view there, and that's way too large. So what we'll do is put some constraints on it, and let's just say eight, 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 add four constraints. And then we don't want that other constraint there on the side. So let's delete that, move this over, and then let's also add a label. 
And for the label, let's just add constraints to center it horizontally and vertically. And then we'll add one more constraint for the spacing here. 27, that's fine, whatever. So that's 27 away from the label. Actually, instead of that, let's delete that 27. Let's come in here and add width and height, and we'll make them both 60, 60. And then the width we can say greater than or equal to 60. And same thing for the height, greater than or equal to 60. For our image view, let's just go to the attributes inspector and change this to square dot arrow. Sure, why not? And now let's hold control and drag to create outlets. So let's call this custom image view. And then we'll also create one for custom label. And now finally, let's go back to our view controller. And here when we are dequeuing a reusable cell, instead of calling the cell reuse identifier, which we had again done on storyboard, what we're gonna do is call the identifier for my table view cell. So my table view cell dot identifier. And now we also want to cast this table view cell as the, our custom table view cell instead of just a regular UI table view cell. So let's force cast it for now as my table view cell. And we don't want to change the text label anymore because there won't be one. So let's close that. Let's also cut this out. We don't need this, so we'll put it in our table view, my table view cell file instead. In our awake from nib, we can just set selection style to be none. And let's come back to our view controller here and we'll set the cell dot custom image view dot image. And we'll make this a UI image system name. Let's just put square dot fill for now. And then the cell dot custom label dot text will be our strings of index path dot row. And this still isn't going to work because we need to register this custom cell with the table so that it knows how to use or to find it. So let's go back to our view did load and do table view dot register. And we're looking for nib and cell reuse identifier. So the nib is going to be our my table view cell dot nib function that we created. And then the cell identifier is going to be my table view cell dot identifier. So now our custom view cell table view cell is registered to our table view. So if we run this, we now have a square filled and the text of each of these and just as a little bonus, we can change the color of this little image here based on whatever path that we're on as well. And now if we run this again, we have different colors. So that's it for today's video. I hope you found it useful. If you have any comments or would like to see anything like this in the future or more expanded knowledge on any of this stuff, uh, please leave a comment and let me know what you think. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of the day.